Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, I'm talking all about Bootstrap typography. Now, do be aware I am working within Bootstrap 5. If you're in Bootstrap 4, most everything will work, but a few changes have happened in Bootstrap 5. So do be aware when you are following this video that I am working in the point or the 5.0 framework. Cool. So typography, one of the big changes in Bootstrap 5 is responsive size depending upon the browser size. If I come back here to this design where I have hello world, it's a boring H1. But the great part about this is if I resize my browser, watch what happens as my browser gets a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. That's important to note because we're gonna change the typography but we're not gonna do it in a fixed weight because we wanna make sure we leverage the power of this responsive size of typography that's now inside a Bootstrap 5. The great part about Bootstrap typography is all the headings are equally responsive. So if I also put in an H2 and an H3, so I'll say H2, this is an H2, and we'll say H3, Oh, not H2 again. Let's add the number three. This is an H3. And for the fun of it, we'll add the H4. H4. This is an H4. And realistically, I always joke, who really uses H5 and H6? And that point, we'll just put it right there. But in reality, we'll just basically take it out because we don't need the H5 or the H6. Let's save that, and now we have refreshing H2, H3, and as I adjust, watch how all change responsively. That's pretty awesome in Bootstrap 5. It has this naturally responsive typography. Because the typography is responsive relative to the browser size, I generally do not set the font size unless I have to adjust or change in a dramatic way where the font is much bigger or much smaller inside my CSS. I'll set up the font style in terms of the font name, what I want to have, but I generally now have stopped setting up the font size because of that responsive framework within Bootstrap 5. If I want to go even larger, there's also the ability to create massive display sizes within your heading. So you can say H1 and set it to even a bigger size. So inside my index, if I have H1, what I can also do is say display one through six. So I can say H1 class equals display, we'll say two, so we can actually see it a lot larger. Check it out. Now it's important to note, don't make your H2s larger than your H1s. It's always where you should follow this hierarchy of size, whereby the H1 should always be the biggest H2, smaller, H3, smaller than that, and H4, smaller than that. I don't ever really use the H5 and H6. If you do, please leave the comment below that you can found a logical way whereby the H5 and H6 are necessary. I can't even find them in Wikipedia articles. So anyways, side note, let me come back to typography. If we come down this page when it comes to type, you can also add the lead. What I like about this one is it's really just adjusting the font size and not anything else. So if I have a paragraph, let's head over to lipsum.com. And if I come down here, grab a paragraph of information, let me grab this one. And what I'll do is I'll bring in a paragraph. Paragraph, drop it in. I don't need lorem ipsum. So by default, looking pretty good. If I wanna add a lead to this, what I can then do is leverage the power of the lead. So I'm gonna take a sentence, we'll just take this one, move it right up here to the paragraph tag, drop it in, and we'll say class lead. What that's gonna do is create more of a lead paragraph. So if you wanted a specialized focus on more of the first sentence, you can leverage the power of lead in addition to using the paragraph. Speaking of typography and paragraphs, notice how this is a much lighter style of font versus the traditional paragraph. That's because the type also has a 300 weighted font. So if I wanna make my paragraph kind of match this design, inside my custom, I can say P, not curly brackets, there we go. 
And then I can say font weight 300. Now when that happens, notice how that this paragraph also matches the lead if you wanna keep it consistent. Now here's also something to be aware of. If I set a strong tag, so if I say I want this to be part of a bold weighted font, I can use strong and what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring it in, but the problem is because I set the paragraph to 300, the strong wasn't reset back to 700. So what I have to do here is inside the P, I have to say P strong, and from here I have to bring the font weight back up to 700, which is the default weight for a bold slash strong font. Let me save that. And now I have the font being much stronger. I usually don't go 300 and 400 because they're just too close together. And it's if you can tell or not tell, let me minimize this one right here. As you can tell right here or not tell, it's kind of hard to see from a user's perspective that this font is much bolder than this font. So I generally go, if I were to go down to 300, then I'm gonna head down to the 700 or the strong to make sure that it really stands out no matter what. I wanna make sure my bold fonts are well bold. Along with bold, there are a few other inline elements you can use with the typography. The bold is represented by a strong. You also get the EM for italics. You also get small, which you can use. And I use this more times than I realized thinking back making this video, because it's just a great way to keep it universally small. So the small inline element, what I can do is if I come back to the index and I say, you know what, I want this sentence to be small, I can say small here, and it'll take the relative size of the paragraph and make it smaller. This is a great way if you wanna keep things consistently smaller by using the small tag to leverage the power of the paragraph tag or any parent thereof. The one inline element I don't really recommend is the use of the underline or the U. That's because in the past, it's changed a little bit nowadays, but in the past, links were both blue and underline. If you need to attribute something or set it up on a big, bibliography, that was a hard word first, then I do recommend using the U, but 99 out of 100 times, I don't use it. I will use the mark to highlight a certain word along with the del to show that this information has been deleted or no longer accurate, but overall, I don't recommend the underlining usage of a span class or an inline element, excuse me, because it really would trick the user to think I can click on that. So yes, more times than not, nowadays links are not underlined, but it still can confuse the user and thereby I don't actually recommend using it that way. So as you come down here, you also have attributions, block quotes, and what I wanna focus on also, if I come down to the very, very bottom, is lists. So what I wanna do with lists, if I have information, is set up not in a paragraph, but add the UL, and the li and say this is a list. And we'll just copy and paste this three times. And by default, which is really great at Bootstrap, if I come down here, you will have bullet points and you will have indentation. If you do not want the bullet points, we're like, you know what, I want the list because if I think about typography, this is a really, really big thing to think about. Is it a heading? Is it a paragraph? or is it a list? There are the three big choices I have when setting type. Yes, there's also a block quote, but the big three are headings, paragraphs, and lists. And I say, well, if it's not a paragraph and it is not a heading, it's gonna be a list. If I don't need bullet point, then I can use the element class list unstyled. So I can add that to the UL and say class equals list unstyled. And that'll remove the bullet points and the spacing. If you want to bring them in, you'll have to set them up in your CSS, but at the very least it now makes a list of information. And again, I can always change the type to say, well, P and then U L L I, or what I can also say is P U L list unstyled. If I have the period, right? And so what I can do is take that out, save, and now the font is matching the font above in the paragraph style, but in a list approach.
The great part also about Bootstrap 5 is I can set type to the left or right, now start or end or center. So what I can say is anywhere in my typography, so let's say I wanna set this H1 to the middle of the page, hello world. What I can say along with display two is say text center. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna move my type to the middle of the screen. If I wanna set it to the start or the left hand side, because now in Bootstrap 5, we have the right to left and left to right responsive typography. So in this case, instead of saying text center, I'm gonna say text end. And what that's gonna do is put it at the end or the right hand side. The reason why they're using end and start, so even though it's back to the left, I'll say start, is that the start and end refers to the right to left. So if this were to change into an Arabic framework, whereby everything is read from right to left, inherently the left and right would switch. That's a lot of saying left, right, right, left. Long story short, start thinking about the left-hand side as the starting area and the right-hand side starting or finishing as the ending area. What you can also do is that, let's say I want this to be centered by default, so we'll say text center. Well, when I move my browser, let's say back to the traditional size of a mobile framework, then what I can do is I can say text start, I'm almost gonna say left, text start, and then text SM center. What this is gonna do, if I save this, I'm still inside the center, but now when I go back, 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 hello world, drops the left-hand side. That's also because this is still a mobile-first framework. Bootstrap was originally called Twitter Bootstrap, mobile-first, so everything starts by default at the mobile size. The text start, I had to reset because everything else above and including the small is now centered. So now I can move my type back to the middle, and in theory what I could also do is say text MD and we'll say end. And that means if I save, come back to the right, center, left. In other words, start, center, end. I hope this really helped you get a better understanding of how typography works within Bootstrap 5. If it did, it would mean the world to me if you hit that like button down below. Also, here's another video regarding Bootstrap 5 that you can watch to understand the big differences and changes within the Bootstrap 5 framework. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.